Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna build a wall, a basalt wall to be precise, but we're not gonna do it the classic way by placing blocks. We're gonna make it a bit more efficient. Just have to place down some lava and then generate the wall. Of course, we're gonna use the new basalt generation mechanic. It was added in the last snapshot. So if you have a lava block on top of soul soil and blue ice next to it, it would generate basalt. Okay, so the idea to get a wall would be we place down a couple lava sources against some blocks and let it flow down. Then we're going to push in the soul soil and the blue ice block and generate the basalt here. And we're going to do that for the next block as well. So next we're going to push this over and generate another block and one block over and so on and so on and this way if we do that for the whole length we, we would get a line of blocks and at the end i want to push everything down and do it for the next slice but yeah you can already see one issue here the basalt blocks here actually prevent the lava from flowing down and it doesn't spread yeah one block over here so we actually need to get rid of those basalt blocks somehow I think the best way to actually do that would just push in one block in. This way the lava can flow again. A simple flying machine that does the job might look like this. So here we have a piston that pushes the basalt blocks out of the way so the lava can flow again. Okay, let's launch it here. So we generate the basalt immediately and push it one block in. Okay, now we can stop it here. And now we could ease the center machine back and then push it one down or we actually try to generate basalt on the way back so that we push the machine down on yeah, each step of the way. But we actually have a problem. This piston here on the way back would actually punch out the lava right before we could generate the basalt. So we would either need to get rid of the piston somehow, place it somewhere else or not power it with the observer. So I'm just gonna refresh the lava here real quick, move the basalt. We can show you the problem. We would try this from, from this side here. Okay, let's launch this. And as you can see, punch out the lava and no basalt is generated. Okay, so the easy way to fix this would be just to yeah, <laughs> move the machine back to the default position and then push it down once, do another layer, fly it back, push it down, do the next layer and so on. But of course it would be a bit slow. I want a machine that does it also on the way back so we can push down on each end. And this will require some repositioning of those pistons here. I moved the pistons a couple blocks away from the blue eyes and soul soil so there should be enough time for the lava to flow again before it reaches the basalt generation part. Right, let's check it out. So it actually is almost perfectly timed, just at the right moment, once the machine arrives here, the lava flows again and we can generate some basalt. Obviously it should fly a bit further, so we don't make the lava mess here. Next step is pushing the flying machine down. That's something I've done a couple of times before. It's three directional flying machine basics. So one of the best ways to do it is actually have a redstone block here and also on the other side. And then use pistons to push both parts down of the machine. So one here and another one there. While this piston is powered directly by the redstone, the other piston is powered by an observer. So we have this one tick delay in between the pushing and then the part that is further away from the intended flying direction is we pushed first. Okay, I can just add some slime blocks here, an observer, and then push it down here. All right, there's also obsidian block ready, it would stop the machine again, so you can see. Pushes it down and the machine immediately flies in the correct direction. Okay, now we just need some kind of a system that gets activated by the flying machine when it's incoming. And what I've been using lately all the time in order to actually push down twice, because well, we have to push down, down the machine once, but the end station obviously needs to be pushed down twice, is this contraption here. So 
we activate a piston would be detected by the observer. Then here we have another piston that also pushes this part down. Then we have a sticky piston here that is powered through the slime block here that grabs the rest of the contraption. Okay, so if we would activate this piston now, we would go down twice. Which is perfect, exactly what we need. So then we can just hook up something that's getting pulled down twice, which would be yeah, the pistons here that push the whole machine down. All right, so let's build this part up. I added a similar thing on the other side as well. It's a bit different because, well, the flying machine is not symmetrical. So I had to rearrange the pistons a little bit. All right, so the piston that actually yeah, starts the whole pushing down twice sequence would be activated um, through the slime block here. And then this part moves down twice. So it doesn't really matter that it touches the slime block for a short moment. Okay, I got another observer here to activate the whole thing. So it went down twice, launches the machine, and on the other side, the same thing will happen. So we can run this now without the lava first, and then we'll try it with the lava in case everything works correctly. Okay, now it comes in here, power this piston again, moves down twice, and launches the machine, flies in the other direction. All right, now let's try it with the lava. So here we go. Hopefully this machine is already working. Okay, salt is generated there. It's getting pushed in. Can go all the way. And now we move the machine one block lower. Okay, also works coming from the other side. Now let's run the game a bit quicker so we can see the final result. So I'm gonna do carpet. Tick warp, oh, it's actually only slash tick warp. Let's do three minutes. Oh, it's actually faster than I expected it to be. Oh my god, this is so quick. <laughs> yeah, light updates are not a huge issue anymore since 1.14. Let's maybe do a tick rate 200 so we can see it 10 times as fast. All right. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. <laughs> 1000, uh, 500 is the max if you tick rate. Okay, let's run it all the way down. Doesn't matter if it gets stuck on the glass at the bottom. Couple more blocks, and then we can reveal hopefully the basalt wall. There we go, now it stopped. Now let's actually keep the tick rate high so the lava dissipates a bit quicker. Let's place down some blocks, get rid of the lava. Of course, you could also use a bucket. And here we have our nice basalt wall. It's getting unveiled. Yeah, for some reason, you ever need to make a huge basalt wall, I guess this is the way to go. All right, so in case you want to build this machine as well, but this was a bit too quick for you, here's a block by block tutorial. All right, so we want to build a basalt wall right here. So that means this part needs to be one block further to the back. Okay, I'm gonna remove those blocks again. And now we can add the flying machine parts to it. So we need a sticky piston that points into the slime block here. One that points the other way. Then three slime blocks around. And then we need the piston punches the basalt to the side. And the bottom observer powering both those pistons through the slime block. Okay, then let's go over to the other side. I'm gonna add three more slime blocks there. Observer facing this way. Here we have a normal piston and an observer pointing into the slime block from the bottom. Okay, then next we can also add the redstone blocks. So an additional block here, redstone block on top, and another one here. Okay, then we can add the end stations. So I'm gonna leave a one block gap in between. We have the upwards facing piston here. Here we have an observer pointing this way. As a normal piston pointing down, then two slime blocks here. So about the powder, sticky piston there. Then we need actually honey blocks, because they would touch some slime blocks here. So four like this, then an observer, and a sticky piston here. 
Then we go up two blocks and four blocks over like this. We can add a normal piston here and one on this end. This needs to be powered by an observer. All right, then the part is done. And now we need to go over and build the station on the other end. Obviously it depends how long your wall will be. Okay, I'm just gonna go over 20 blocks or 15 blocks for the demonstration. This piston that will activate the mechanism needs to be one block lower because this part will be pushed down. Okay, right in this place, I'm gonna remove the scaffolding there. Then again, server, piston facing down, slime blocks, then server pointing into the slime block here, sticky piston, and four slime blocks like that. Here observer and sticky piston and five slime blocks. Piston facing downwards here, observer on top, and the other piston goes right against the third slime block. Okay, then we just need to put in the lava. Gonna keep a bit of distance and place some yeah, blocks here to place the lava against. Let's go one block higher. So that it shouldn't be too close to this part of the machine so it doesn't spill over the, the flying machine while it's going down. So we're gonna keep uh, one block of distance here in between. And yeah, it needs to be placed here so the lava is gonna flow over to soil soil. Okay, let's add more blocks. And here we want to keep three blocks of distance in between so the lava doesn't spill over. Okay, let's get the lava. Place it against the slime blocks. Okay, that's flowing down. And now we need to get a fire charge to launch the flying machine. So place it against the observer here. And hopefully, if done everything right, this should be working. Okay, looking good so far. Yep, the other side as well. Okay, so in case this is taking too long for you, you can also use a non movable block like obsidian and place it in front of the flying machine to park it. Ideally you would park it outside of the range um, of the lava. So ideally just, just put one obsidian here in between. Now the lava doesn't flow over the flying machine. We can launch it again using the fire charge. That's it for today. As you might have guessed, I'm having a lot of fun with the new basalt generators and will release a couple more videos about the topic. There's just so much you can do with it. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.